In this lesson, we will learn about God's redemptive plan for heaven and earth. What is the thing you most look forward to in God's new heaven and new earth? Today's key verse reads, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. In the closing chapters of Isaiah, God promised that he would create a new heaven and a new earth that would endure before him forever. The unfolding of the fulfillment of this prophecy is presented in John's vision of the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven to take its place upon a renewed earth in Revelation 21 through 22. Chapter 21 begins with John's vision of the transformation of the new order. In verses 1 through 8, the first heaven and earth are replaced by a new heaven and earth. The vision shows an entirely new order of existence. It is new in that it is the redeemed order. It has taken place of the old. It is a creation that is renewed and brought to the glorious consummation for which it is intended. In verse 5, God speaks from his throne, Behold, I make all things new. John uses the metaphor of a good and promising marriage to describe the power and reality of what the new order brings to God's people. The city is personified as a bride adorned for a husband. The word adorned is appropriate and fitting for the city. It is also connected with the word for world in Greek, from which English gets the word cosmos. The careful preparation and arrangement of a bride embodies the gift that God is giving to his people. This is no ordinary city. The new home for God's people is excellent beyond all our human imaginations or dream. The fall in Eden brought with it death, sickness, and poverty. The Bible teaches about three types of death. Spiritual death is the result of the broken relationship between God and humankind as said in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Physical death occurs when our spirit is separated from the body, as in James chapter 2, verse 26. And eternal death occurs when sinners depart forever into condemnation by spending eternity in the lake of fire, Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 through 15, and 21, verse 8. But in our new home, the scriptures reveal that all of these kinds of death shall be no more, as said in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. This is sealed by God's promising declaration, Behold, I make all things new. God further says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. This claim was previously made by the risen Christ in chapter 1, verse 8. This figure of speech, called a merism, states the opposite poles of something in order to emphasize the totality of all that lies between. Alpha is the first letter of the Greek alphabet, and Omega is the last. God is the beginning and the end. The word for beginning is arche. It does not simply mean first in point of time, but it means the source of all things. The word for end is telos. It does not simply mean the end as a point of time, but it means the end as the completed goal. John is saying that all life begins in God and ends in God. Paul expresses the same thing in Romans chapter 11, verse 36, and Ephesians 4, verse 6. The section concludes with a challenge to the readers to recognize the difference between those who are faithful and those who are not, that is, to decide whether to be an overcomer or a coward. The exalted Christ promises that overcomers who remain faithful in the face of opposition will eat from the tree of life, escape the second death, receive a new name, receive authority over the nations, remain in the book of life, be eternally united with God in the heavenly city, and share the rule of Christ. In the end, believers will drink from the water of life. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire. For who we truly seek is you.